So it took a few minutes this evening to kind of further explore these multi-channel possibilities that are now a part of the Max for Live environment inside of Ableton Live Suite 10. And it kind of got me thinking about Ambisonics again, which is some technology that's been around for a long time and really coming back into the picture as we see things like YouTube and Facebook 360 videos as well as AR and VR and MRs and all of the R kind of categories of things, all this immersive audio or 360 audio, it's starting to become more consumable because of cheaper products. Um, so uh, anyways, it got me thinking about that stuff again and how that might be useful inside of Ableton Live with this multi-channel Max for Live stuff. So um, I'm using a library um, that I actually um, found via Julian Bale here. Uh, he recommended, he kind of showed some of his preliminary uh, investigations into this area. And uh, so that's kind of what, what kick-started this. Uh, so I'm looking at it here, um, and this is kind of the, the flow through, so I'll just walk you guys through the basic setup here that I've got a source track, which is this uh, operator, just a very simple operator track. Let's actually go ahead and send this straight out to the master so we can hear what that sounds like by itself. Let's mute everybody else out. Just a super simple little idea. So then I've dropped that inside of a group. And I'll reroute the audio output of this back to its group track here. Um, encode for ambisonics. And then on this encode for ambisonics, I've got an audio effect rack. And I really don't need to have this, but it's kind of showing the creative possibilities of it. That I received that audio signal coming in, the stereo from that operator track, which passes into this group track. And then two copies of it get split inside of this audio effect track. First one that goes down the front, second one that goes down the echo effect. And down the first one, just got an auto pan, doing some enveloping on it, giving a little bit of smack to the sound, a little wibble wobble back and forth between left and right channels. And then it goes into this Max for Live device that uses that ambisonic library that I was just talking about that Julian Bale kind of directed me towards. And that allows me to take those two stereo sources and position them in a 360 degree environment around the listener's head or in the listening environment. Um, and then the way that's encoded is in uh, fourth order ambisonics which actually needs nine channels to encode your stereo information in that 360 degree field. Uh, so then we direct 10 channels, because Ableton thinks in terms of stereo tracks, we direct 10 channels from this device, so we're kind of sucking the signal out of the track at this point, over to another audio track that has my decoder on it. So if we go look at the decoder track, it's just this little Max for Live device, DRD underscore binaural decoder that's on there. It's actually receiving all nine or ten of those tracks and then decoding it from the uh, encoded form of ambisonics to a binaural so you can listen to it on headphones. Um, but we could also go and decode this to any speaker arrangement that we want to. So uh, to kind of finish this signal flow, let's go back to this track, get it on. And we can see this one's routed out to the track input, so the first in one and two. This one's routed out to the decoders three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. We'll turn on that track, and now if I hit play, let's go in and let's turn off this one for the time being. So we're just listening to this front one. And I'm going to right click on number two here and say let's mute that source so we can just listen to just the left channel. And if you're wearing headphones, you can kind of hear this. is moving around your head. So then I've got that sitting over there. Then I'll right click to unmute this one. Now there's our right channel moving around. And then I've started to get a little creative with this by using this effect rack. So here I've got another copy of the signal that goes into the new echo device turn that on and then that goes into another ambisonic decoder that's also oops, I'm gonna turn it on that's also routed out to that same decoder track and you can barely see it but it's got its number one and its number two sitting far right there 
give kind of some ambiance to this track. Then I've also got one step further, and I've got my reverb track over here, which has another ambisonic encoder on it. It's pointed to that same decoder track, and it's pushed all the way to being as if it's behind me. So as I bring up the send here on this operator or the source track, get more signal going over to that reverb track, and you can kind of hear this reverb all of a sudden filling in behind you. sounds like with or without this. So now to kind of peel back the skin here and show you what's going on. If we go to the encoder track, let's look at one of these ambisonic encoders. And you'll have to forgive me, this is just kind of, I'm sketching this through, so it's not the most beautiful patch yet. Um, nor can I take a lot of credit for it, but this is mostly just the patches um, coming from this Ambisonics uh, object library for Max. So here, let's unfreeze it. Here we've got the plug-in, which is bringing our stereo input into Max, which then goes into the uh, HOA object that takes and maps our stereo signal um, based upon the controller over here, which is routing in the polar coordinates for both points one and point two, and it encodes that source coming in the left-hand side to be at that location, and this source coming in the right-hand side to be at that location. And then we're telling it that it's a fourth order ambisonics and it's expecting two input sources. So because it's fourth order, that means it's gonna pump out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine channels of audio that are representing the encoded versions of that spatialized sound source. Then I pass that into the plug out, which is the output of our, out of our Max for Live device. And I started on channel three and I run that through channel 11 so that we don't have any signal that's passing through. This could be something you could add in if you wanted to have throughput for, for whatever reason in your Max for Live device, but I wanted to just totally cut the signal at this point so I'd only be dealing with the spatialized version. And then uh, that's outputting it out of the patch. And then these little devices over here, which I stole out of the uh, surround panner from Ableton, um, are what allow me to set what or where, I should say, 3 and 4 are going to, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, so on and so forth. Actually, a little bit out of order there. But to remap where these outputs are actually going to, and instead of having them pass out of the track, I can send them over to the track that actually holds the decoder to take this encoded ambisonic auto and decode it to whatever environment I want to. So far, I've only set it up to decode to binaural, because I'm working at home and I just have my headphones on, but because it's an encoded and decoded format, you can turn it into however many channels of audio you want to. And for more on that, you can just uh, look at the decoding options and get, read kind of more about this library. So this is the uh, encoding um, Max for Live device. Let's go take a look at the decoding Max for Live device. Sitting on our decoder track, click on the little edit button, unlock it, open it up. And here you see we've got a plug-in receiving 10 channels. The 10th one isn't being used because we only need to exchange nine channels of audio for fourth order ambisonics. Then passes into this little object um, that just kind of prepares the information, kind of cleans it up and helps bring everything into phase. And then here's the actual uh, decoder. So the other one encoded it. Now this one takes it in. We tell it what order of ambisonics. It should be receiving information in, in this case fourth order, so nine channels, and then at what mode we want to um, decode to, in this case binaural. So it's just going to give me two channels from all those nine with those sounds uh, kind of sounding as if they're around my head. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. Um, and this would be the point at which if we wanted to decode for another arrangement of speakers, we could do that. If I just open up the help patch, command shift H on this, I'm sure it will give us some ideas here. Regular, yeah, so here we can see number of loudspeakers, so we could set how many channels we want to decode for. Um, we can set it up for binaural, 
um, whatever we want to, and I even think, yeah, here, mode, regular, irregular, binaural, number of channels. And then there's also other objects, um, vector, 2D, um, signal. Yeah, somewhere in the collection of objects here, there's another um, one that looks very similar to the control that we saw in the encoding Max for Live device that will let you actually specify where uh, the speakers are in your room that you're working in. So you can encode both where the audio sources are as well as where the speakers or destinations are. So anyways, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I think it's pretty great now that Max for Live supports this many uh, or these options of exchanging data back and forth uh, because it opens up possibilities for doing things like this, ambisonic or binaural audio inside of Ableton or getting crazier and adding in uh, multi-channel surround stuff coming from a single track or from multiple tracks. So, hope this helps. All right, bye.